As the season approached, I could hardly wait. The anticipation of what the season could bring kept me focused as I prepared. The countless arrows shot and hours spent looking at the map developing a game plan. The dialogue between myself and Mike only amplified the excitement as the hunt approached. I would be flying home the second week of November to hunt Wisconsin. I would be hunting solo for a couple days, and then my older brother Mike would be joining me for the last two. I love when I get to share opportunities with my family, because for us, it's not about the hunt. It's about the story, the preparation, the ups, the downs. It's about unanswered questions that we are striving to find the answers for, knowing full well they may never come. It has never been, and it will never be, about us. Never about how big, how many, or how often. The constant struggles and challenges that we are faced throughout the season make it worthwhile when we persevere and conquer what is in front of us. Besides spending time in the woods with Mike, there was something else that made this weekend hunt special. We would be hunting in Wisconsin, where my Uncle John used to hunt. If there's a barn up in heaven, I know you're sitting there Swapping stories with the man in black and the man upstairs And St. Peter's heading over after a shift at the pearly gates Cause you promised him a beer when he let you in that January day And I bet there's a hell of a jukebox Need neon allowed to go Spending classic country 45s And good old rock and roll You never need a taxi You walk home across the clouds If there's a bar up in heaven if drinking is allowed, then there's a bar up in heaven Where they all know you by now Maybe your waitress is an angel the bar Known for his thunderous laugh and his welcoming smile, my Uncle John grew up falling in love with the outdoors. As he developed this passion, he began to hunt and fish whenever he could. As time passed, he began to spread this love with his family and his kids. Whether it be trips to the cabin, the farm, or the lake, John loved to keep the mood light with his all-too-often jokes. He had the ability to meet complete strangers, and within a few hours and a couple Windsor diets, they seemed to be best friends. People around him were attracted to his demeanor and personality. Unfortunately, in March 2018, John's journey was cut short. Even though his giant laugh is missed, his positive outlook on life is instilled with those he loved. His passion for life has been passed down to his family and friends, which keep them going each and every day. Mike and I knew that this weekend would be special no matter what, because we knew that regardless of how the four-day hunt turned out, our hearts would be filled because of the memories that we were going to make. Mike and I decided that this weekend would be dedicated to John because we knew he would be with us. In spirit. I bet there's a hell of a jukebox Need me on a lot to go Spending class at country 45s And good old rock and roll You never need a taxi You walk home across the clouds If there's a bar up in heaven If drinking is allowed Then there's a bar up in heaven where they all know you by now Finally it was here, November 13th. I couldn't wait to start the adventure. I landed late in Minneapolis and flung a few arrows under the street lights in front of my parents' house. With everything looking good, I took a nap for a few hours before headed to the farm in Spooner. I used Thursday as an observation day in hopes to get lucky. I sat on the edge of a bean field in a ground blind that I had set up, hoping the deer would be grazing nearby. I didn't see anything that morning, so midday I walked the property looking for a spot to hang my stand. I ended up finding a few stands that John and his family had set up a few years back and decided to utilize one of them. 
Thursday afternoon, I saw a handful of does walking around in the distance, which gave me encouragement leading into Friday. November 15th, 7 a.m. Friday afternoon was much like Thursdays. I saw some deer, but didn't all fall together. Knowing that Mike would be joining me tomorrow, I set my climber stand up on the east side of the property. I was planning on having Mike sit in the stand that I sat in the past few days because I was seeing plenty of deer. Mike arrived with just enough time to shoot his bow before the sun went down. Friday night we spent grabbing some food and talking nonstop about the possibilities of Saturday's hunt. Mike was very opportunistic and confident that we were going to double up in the morning, but I didn't have the same feeling. We went to bed for a few hours, but as soon as the alarm clock rang, we were headed to the woods. We parked, got our gear on, and both headed our separate ways. I knew exactly where I was going, to my climber stand, which I had set up the day before. Mike, on the other hand, was going to a stand that he had never even seen before, because this was the first time that he had stepped foot on the property. It took him quite a while to find his stand, the sun was almost up, but with the sign from above, he eventually was able to find it. Right at shooting light, I had three does walk by my stand on the backside. I was thinking to myself that if that was a buck, there was no way I'd be able to have a shot at it. A few minutes later, I saw a different deer taking the same general path, and I made a game time decision to move my stand to the other side of the tree. It took me quite a while, almost a half hour, but finally, I got set up. Dude, I just smoked a buck, bro. He's right there. Oh my gosh. Dude, he's gonna tip over. Oh my gosh, dude. Oh my gosh, dude. Oh, dude. Oh my gosh. I didn't even time to freak out, dude. Alright, so here's the trail. He walked down. He got to right here. That's when I pulled back. And he stepped out. My Knox land literally right here. That's where I shot him 12 yards. He followed that game trail. And I just ranged it. 
he's sitting there. So he walked 22 yards after I shot him. What's up, dude? I shot a buck. You shot a buck? Dude, so did I. <laughs> no way. I swear to God, dude, he's laying down right in front of me. I swear to God, dude. We doubled up on bucks. I just shot it. I was up there. I'll tell you this later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but, all right, yeah. All right, bye. All right, bye. <laughs> dude. Dude, I don't know what to think right now. Like, did not think he had this much on him. I just thought it was a little buck. I didn't even have time, man. He freaking snuck up on me. I was dinking with my camera stuff, and all I had to, do, all I had time to do was grab my bow and not even. I can't believe. I'm happy it happened that way because I would have had buck fever so bad. But all I literally had to do was focus on grabbing my bow and then within five seconds, the shot was already going off. So, pretty special day. It's, it's November 16th, 2019. And uh, shot my first buck. But the best part about it is that my brother Mike's here and uh, we're hunting at our Uncle John's farm. And uh, we both we both loved him very much. He always would come up and hunt this. So for my brother Mike to be here and for us to both shoot bucks on the first day we got here together, it's something special. I know he's up there looking down on us, smiling. So thanks, Uncle John. Memories made this week and will never be forgotten. Family time is what we cherish the most. We've had quite a few lasting memories in the woods or on the water throughout the years that we will take to our graves. It seems when we get together it's always about remembering the experiences that we have shared in the past and truly living in the moment we're creating right now. Every time we look at old pictures or videos I get the excitement to see where our next adventure will take us.